Middle Earth, Shadow of War. The sequel to the acclaimed Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War brings us back into the boots of Talion, former ranger of Gondor, and vessel for the elven wraith Celebrimbor. After thwarting the plans for Dark Lord Sauron, Talion returns with a new ring and a new quest to bring war to all of Mordor. Talion wouldn't be much of a ranger if he couldn't use a bow. Of course he can. Apart from the original bow Azkar, Talion can equip a selection of other bows which are identical in function but differ in stats and appearance. For those who wonder, these are all functional bows, though their shape and design are more similar to modern reflex bows. As with the previous game, Talion's bow uses magical elf shot, which is replenished by picking up batches of arrows scattered around the world. We we'll also see glimpses of Celebrimbor's greatest moments in flashback missions. For those unfamiliar with the series, the combat system is sort of a mix between Assassin's Creed and the Batman Arkham series. Most of the fighting is centred on well-timed button presses and combinations, mostly countering enemies and using execution moves until all foes are dead, with some tactical boss battles through the game's nemesis system. The archery in the game is mostly a utility role, though many skills enhance its usefulness. The basic functionality is a single shot that can be charged for more damage, typically killing grunts in a single headshot. By default, using the bow activates focus, which slows down time. The main use for this is to hit difficult targets while on the move, and taking out multiple grunts. The basic arrows are also used to trigger environmental hazards, such as exploding grog barrels or attracting beasts by shooting down bait. Hitting these can swing a battle greatly in your favour, especially in exploiting weaknesses. A unique ability in the series is pinning the enemy. By aiming at an orc's leg, the target is unable to move. This temporarily puts them out of battle, or can stop a fleeing opponent in his tracks for you to chase down. Some captains are particularly vulnerable to pinning shots or arrows, causing extra damage or dazing them, allowing you to nullify their strengths for a quick kill. On the other hand, many captains are also arrow-proof, forcing you to think of more creative ways to bring them down. As you unlock more skills and items, things begin to get quite interesting for ranged playstyles. Upgrades allow you to focus while jumping, giving you hawk-like accuracy in slow motion. The range mode is used to aim the Shadow Strike ability, which instantly teleports you to the target opponent for instant kill. With a full might meter, you can unleash a mighty shot, which does a decent amount of damage up front. Items and item sets may also give extra stats to your arrows, such as freezing enemies or exploding on headshots. Finally, the Elven Rage ability allows you to spam unlimited attacks for a short time, peppering foes with arrows and some of the chain execution moves feature an awesome close range kill shot. The DLC expansion packs unlock two new characters and mini campaigns, Eltariel, the Blade of Galadriel, and Baronor, a Haradrim turned Captain of Gondor. Eltariel's equipment and gameplay is very similar to Talion's. She uses an elven bow in the same manner with slow motion focus mode, charge shots, and so on. She can unlock the quick shot skill, which is effectively her version of Talion's dagger throw. The main difference is her use of light skills, with very versatile abilities that blind enemies and act as both ranged and close distance skills. The campaign missions feature some novel uses of the bow. While the main function is the same, the legendary items that are easily unlocked offer a huge amount of specialization as many of the elemental sets are triggered by arrows, allowing the player to cause chain explosions or instantly freeze enemies. The real hero, however, is Baronor. As a mortal man, Baronor lacks the supernatural abilities of the other characters, a fact reflected in the single life limitation in the campaign. To make up for it, Baronor gains the most badass tool in the game, a Numenorian gauntlet that doubles up as a shield and a crossbow. From a canon perspective, this is extremely odd, but I can live with ancient technology as interpreted by the game. 
and it's really fun to use, turning Baronaut into a Gondorian commando. By default, the crossbow shoots steel bolts, which can instant kill Grunt with a headshot, and with enough upgrades and bonuses, it can one hit kill most regular enemies, and even bring down captains with several headshots. After finding Numenorian artifacts, the player can upgrade the crossbow to use fire and poison bolts, as well as area effect bombs. It's weirdly modern in a fantasy universe, but it's so much fun to use. A rapid fire wrist crossbow with an easy to use ammo switching wheel allowing you to change ammunition on the fly in the middle of combat. It's really smooth and satisfying and rewards you for paying attention to enemy weaknesses. Given that Baronor is fragile, it's fair to give him the most firepower. Even the mercenary bodyguards are surprisingly effective with their bows. The best move, in my opinion, is Baronel's Chain Kill. While Talion and Altariel could execute several enemies in a row with their ring powers, Baronel achieves this to a greater extent with his crossbow. After a stealth kill or execution, Baronel can tag multiple enemies, bringing them down with a single shot each in a technique reminiscent of gun cutter. This was easily my favourite technique. From a gameplay perspective, Shadow of War was very enjoyable. The combat was smooth and the game encouraged you to maximise all your abilities and use them in the heat of battle. The Nemesis system is a real treasure, with bosses bearing a mix of strengths and weaknesses, you always had a reason to use your bow. If a captain was weak against arrows, you turned them into pin cushions. If they were afraid of being pinned, you made sure they took an arrow to the knee. Immune to arrows, a shot to a spider's nest or caragal bait might do it. For a fantasy game, it boasts some of the smoothest uses of archery that make you think about your tactics and punish you for being too reliant on the same skills. If you haven't played Shadow of War, it's definitely worth checking out, along with the story expansions. As a fan of these games, of the Lord of the Rings universe and of archery, I thought that Shadow of War definitely hit the mark. Thank you for watching this episode of Archery Pop Shots. This is New Sensei, and as always, shoot straight and aim for your best.